Chapter 22 The Pilgrimage In the Name of Allah, the Most Gracious, the Most Merciful O mankind, fear your Lord and be dutiful to Him. Indeed, the earthquake of the hour of judgment is a terrible thing. The day you shall see it, every nursing mother will discard her feeding baby, and every pregnant one will drop her load, and you shall see mankind as in a drunken state, yet they will not be drunken but severe will be the torment of Allah. And among mankind is he who disputes concerning Allah without knowledge and follows every rebel disobedient to Allah from amongst the devils. For him, the devil, it is decreed that whoever follows him, he will be misled, and he will drive him to the torment of the fire. O mankind, if you are in doubt about the resurrection, then indeed, we have created you from dust, then from a tiny drop, then from a clot, a piece of thick coagulated blood, and then from a little lump of flesh, some of it formed and some unformed, that we may make it clear to you and show you our power and ability to do what we will. And we cause whom we will to remain in the womb for an appointed term. Then we bring you out as infants, then give you growth that you may reach your age of full strength. And among you there is he who dies young, and among you there is he who is brought back to a miserable old age, so that he knows nothing after having known much. And you see the earth barren, but when we send down water onto it, it is stirred to life, it swells and puts forth every kind of lovely growth. That is because Allah is the truth, and it is he who gives life to the dead, and it is he who is able to do all things. And surely the hour is coming, there is no doubt about it, and certainly Allah will resurrect those who are in the graves. And among men is he who disputes about Allah, without knowledge or guidance, or a book giving light, bending his neck in pride, far astray from the path of Allah. For him there is disgrace in this worldly life, and on the day of resurrection we shall make him taste the torment of burning fire. This is because of what your hands have sent forth, and indeed, Allah is not unjust to his slaves. And among mankind is he who worships Allah, as it were, upon the very edge, and in doubt. If good befalls him, he is content with it, but if a trial befalls him, he turns back on his face and reverts back to disbelief after embracing Islam. He loses both this world and the hereafter. That is the evident loss. He calls besides Allah that which does not hurt him or profit him. That is a straying far away. He calls to him whose harm is nearer than his profit, certainly an evil patron and certainly an evil friend. Truly, Allah will admit those who believe in his oneness and do righteous good deeds to gardens underneath which rivers flow in paradise. Indeed, Allah does what he wills. Whoever thinks that Allah will not help Muhammad in this world and in the hereafter, let him stretch out a rope to the ceiling and let him strangle himself. Then let him see whether his plan will remove that of which he rages. Thus we have sent this Quran down to Muhammad with clear signs, evidences and proofs, and surely Allah guides whom he wills. Indeed, those who believe in Allah and in his messenger Muhammad and those who are Jews and Sabians and Christians and Magians, and those who worship others besides Allah, truly, Allah will judge between them on the day of resurrection. Indeed, Allah is witness over all things. Do you not see that to Allah prostrates whoever is in the heavens, and whoever is on the earth, and the sun, and the moon, and the stars, and the mountains, and the trees, and the moving living creatures, and beasts, and many of mankind? but there are many men on whom the punishment is justified. And whoever Allah disgraces, none can honor him. Indeed, Allah does what he wills. These two opponents, believers and disbelievers, dispute with each other about their Lord. Then, as for those who disbelieve, garments of fire will be cut out for them, and boiling water will be poured down over their heads. With it will melt what is within their bellies, as well as their skins. And for them are hooked rods of iron to punish them. 
Every time they seek to get away from the anguish, they will be driven back to it, and it will be said to them, Taste the torment of burning. Truly, Allah will admit those who believe in the oneness of Allah, and do righteous good deeds, to gardens underneath which rivers flow in paradise, where they will be adorned with bracelets of gold and pearls, and their garments there will be of silk. And they are guided in this world to goodly speech, that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah. And they are guided to the path of him, Allah, who is worthy of all praises. Indeed, those who disbelieve and hinder men from the path of Allah, and from the sacred mosque at Mecca, which we have made open to all men, in it the dweller and the visitor from the country are equal there, as regards its sanctity and pilgrimage. And whoever inclines to evil actions there, or to do wrong, we shall cause him to taste a painful torment. And remember when we showed Abraham the sight of the sacred house at Mecca, saying, Do not associate anything in worship with me. None has the right to be worshipped but Allah. And sanctify my house for those who go walk around it, and those who stand up for prayer, and those who bow and submit themselves with humility and obedience to Allah, and make prostration in prayer. And proclaim to mankind the Hajj pilgrimage. They will come to you on foot, and on every lean camel, and from every deep and distant wide mountain highway, to perform the Hajj pilgrimage, that they may witness things that are of benefit to them, and mention the name of Allah on the appointed days, over the beast of cattle that he has provided for them for sacrifice. Then eat of the cattle, and feed the poor, who have a very hard time. Then let them complete the prescribed duties for the pilgrimage, and perform their vows, and perform the circumambulation of the sacred house at Mecca. Such is the pilgrimage, and whoever honors the sacred things of Allah, then that is better for him with his Lord. The cattle are lawful to you, except those that will be mentioned to you as exceptions. So shun the abomination of the worshipping of idols, and shun lying speech and false statements. And be true in faith to Allah, and never associate partners in worship with Him. And whoever assigns partners to Allah, it is as if he had fallen from the sky, and the birds had snatched him, or the wind had thrown him to a far-off place. Thus it is an obligation that mankind owes to Allah, and whosoever honors the symbols of Allah, then it is truly from the piety of the heart. In the cattle offered for sacrifice are benefits for you for an appointed term, and afterwards they are brought for sacrifice to the sacred house at Mecca. And for every nation we have appointed religious ceremonies, that they may mention the name of Allah over the beast of cattle that he has given them for food. And your God is one God, Allah, so you must submit to him alone in Islam. And, O Muhammad, give glad tidings to those who obey Allah with humility, and who are humble from among the true believers in the oneness of Allah, whose hearts are filled with fear when Allah is mentioned, who patiently bear whatever may befall them of calamities, and who perform prayer, and who spend in Allah's cause out of what we have provided to them. And the cows, oxen, or camels driven to be offered as sacrifices by the pilgrims at the sanctuary of Mecca, we have made for you as among the symbols of Allah, in them you have much good. So mention the name of Allah over them when they are drawn up in lines for sacrifice. Then, when they are down on their sides after slaughter, eat of them, and feed the poor who do not ask men, and the poor who ask men. Thus we have made them subject to you, that you may be grateful. It is neither their meat nor their blood that reaches Allah, but it is your piety that reaches Him. Thus we have made them subject to you, that you may magnify Allah for His guidance to you. And give glad tidings, O Muhammad, to those who do good. Truly, Allah defends those who believe. Indeed, Allah does not like the treacherous, nor those who show ingratitude to Allah, those who disobey Allah and obey Satan. Permission to fight is given to those believers who are fighting disbelievers, because the believers have been wronged, and surely Allah is able to give the believers victory. 
They are those who have been expelled from their homes unjustly, only because they said, Our Lord is Allah. For had it not been that Allah checks one set of people by means of another, monasteries, churches, synagogues, and mosques, where the name of Allah is mentioned much, would surely have been pulled down. Indeed, Allah will help those who help His cause. Truly, Allah is all-strong, almighty. They are those who, if we give them power in the land, they order for prayer, to give charity, and they enjoin all that Islam orders one to do, and forbid disbelief, polytheism, and all that Islam has forbidden. They make the Quran as the law of their country in all the spheres of life, and with Allah rests the end of all matters of creatures. And if they deny you, O Muhammad, so were denied the prophets before you, by the people of Noah, Ard, and Thamud, and the people of Abraham, and the people of Lot, and the dwellers of Midian. And Moses was denied, but I granted respite to the disbelievers for a while, then I seized them, and how terrible was my punishment against their wrongdoing. And many a town have we destroyed, while it was given to wrongdoing so that it lies in ruins up to this day, and many a deserted well and lofty mansion. Have they not travelled through the land, and have they hearts with which to understand, and ears with which to hear? Indeed, it is not the eyes that grow blind, but it is the hearts which are in the chests that grow blind. And they ask you to hasten on the torment, and Allah does not fail in His promise, and indeed... A day with your Lord is as a thousand years of what you reckon. And many a town did I give respite to while it was given to wrongdoing. Then, in the end, I seized it with punishment, and to me is the final return of all. Say, O Muhammad, O mankind, I am sent to you only as a plain warner. So those who believe in the oneness of Allah and do righteous good deeds... For them is forgiveness and a generous provision in paradise. But those who strive against our proofs, signs, and revelations to frustrate and obstruct them, they will be dwellers of the hellfire. Never did we send a messenger or a prophet before you, but when he recited the revelation or narrated or spoke, Satan threw some falsehood in it. But Allah abolishes that which Satan throws in. Then Allah establishes His revelations, and Allah is all-knower, all-wise. That He, Allah, may make what is thrown in by Satan a trial for those in whose hearts is a disease of hypocrisy and disbelief, and whose hearts are hardened. And certainly the polytheists and wrongdoers are in opposition and far off from the truth from Allah's messenger and the believers and that those who have been given knowledge may know that it, this Quran, is the truth from your Lord, and that they may believe in it, and their hearts may submit to it with humility. And indeed, Allah is the guide of those who believe to the straight path. And those who disbelieve will not cease to be in doubt about this Quran until the hour comes suddenly upon them, or there comes to them the torment of the day of resurrection, after which there will be no night. The sovereignty on that day will be that of Allah. He will judge between them. So those who believed in the oneness of Allah and did righteous good deeds will be in gardens of delight in paradise. And those who disbelieved and denied our verses in this Quran, for them will be a humiliating torment in hell. Those who emigrated in the cause of Allah and afterwards were killed or died, surely Allah will provide a good provision for them. And indeed, it is Allah who is the best of those who make provision. Truly, He will admit them to an entrance with which they shall be well pleased, and Allah is all-knowing, most forbearing. That is so. And whoever has retaliated with the like of that which he was made to suffer, and then has again been wronged, Allah will surely help him. Indeed, Allah is oft pardoning, oft forgiving.
That is because Allah merges the night into the day, and he merges the day into the night, and Allah is all hearer, all seer. That is because Allah is the truth, the only true God of all that exists, who has no partners or rivals with him, and whatever the polytheists invoke besides him, it is falsehood. And indeed, Allah is the Most High, the Most Great. Do you not see that Allah sends down rain from the sky, and then the earth becomes green? Allah is the most kind and courteous, well acquainted with all things. To him belongs all that is in the heavens and all that is on the earth. And Allah is rich, free of all wants, worthy of all praise. Do you not see that Allah has subjected to you all that is on the earth and the ships that sail through the sea by his command? He prevents the heavenly bodies from falling into the earth except by his leave. Allah is, for mankind, full of kindness, most merciful. It is he who gave you life and will cause you to die and will again give you life on the day of resurrection. Surely, Man is ungrateful. For every nation, we have ordained religious ceremonies which they must follow. So let the pagans not dispute with you on the matter of eating the cattle which you slaughter, but invite them to your Lord. Indeed, you, O Muhammad, are on the true straight guidance. And if they argue with you as regards the slaughtering of the sacrifices, say, Allah knows best of what you do. Allah will judge between you on the day of resurrection about that which you used to differ. Do you not know that Allah knows all that is in the heavens and on the earth? Indeed, it is all in the book of decrees. That is easy for Allah. And they worship besides Allah others for which he has sent down no authority, and of which they have no knowledge, and for the wrongdoers, polytheists, and disbelievers in the oneness of Allah, there is no helper. And when our clear verses are recited to them, you will notice a denial on the faces of the disbelievers. They are nearly ready to attack with violence those who recite our verses to them. Say, shall I tell you of something worse? The fire of hell, which Allah has promised to those who disbelieve, and worst indeed is that destination. O oh, mankind, a similitude has been coined, so listen to it carefully. Indeed, those on whom you call besides Allah cannot even create a fly, even though they combine together for the purpose. And if the fly snatched away a thing from them, they would have no power to release it. So weak are both the seeker and the sort. They have not valued Allah his rightful estimate. Indeed, Allah is all-strong, almighty. Allah chooses messengers from angels and from men. Allah is all-hearer, all-seer. He knows what is before them and what is behind them, and to Allah return all matters for decision. O oh, you who believe, bow down and prostrate yourselves, and worship your Lord, and do good that you may be successful. And strive hard in Allah's cause, as you ought to strive with sincerity and with all your efforts, that his name should be superior. He has chosen you to convey his message to mankind by inviting them to his religion, Islam, and has not laid upon you in religion any hardship. It is the religion of your father Abraham. It is Allah who has named you Muslims both before and in this Quran so that the messenger may be a witness over you, and you be witnesses over mankind. So perform prayer, give charity, and hold fast to Allah. He is your patron and Lord. What an excellent patron and Lord, and what an excellent helper.